Here's a little behind the scenes with your boy Bob over here. Normally I don't like to reach out to companies for products because it weirdly feels like I owe them a favor and it usually comes with all sorts of rules. If a company reaches out to me and I see it and I'm interested, then I'm happy to oblige. But otherwise, I'd much rather just purchase the product myself. Then I get to experience the whole buying aspect of the product. Well, this product was all over the internet news back in July of last year. I guess it's my fault for waiting so long after the Kickstarter had ended, but I ordered mine on March 15th and didn't receive it until just this week. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten such a popular color. So you might have seen this thing already from other YouTubers. It's called the Funky S. It is, by their claim, the world's smallest foldable handheld console. It is definitely the most portable one that I own, and it is surprisingly functional, powerful, and easy to operate, even if it is literally as big as my thumbs. This video is sponsored by Adorama. And cut. Where's my coffee? It's right here. Yeah, mom. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be here a while. He just needs to be this. He doesn't know this point ever. He never gets it. It just doesn't have a right. Yeah, this is a very guerrilla operation. It might surprise you, but I film everything here myself. I like having nice camera gear, but I also like having things that are good quality, reliable, and most importantly, easy to use, so I can just get the job done. First real YouTuber camera that I got was the YouTuber special at the time. It was the Canon 70D. This is, this is not that. I got it when I used to work in Manhattan and right around the block was Adorama. Speaking of 2015 YouTube. You might have noticed that I've been recording a lot more videos from my desk here. That's because I used Adorama to upgrade my streaming setup so that I could also record from here. Not with this camera, with this camera. It is, it is a lot nicer now. If you're at all interested in camera gear or streaming or, or how I shoot my videos or any of this sort of setup and you want to ask some questions, head on over to the Adorama XP Twitch channel tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time. I will be over there and I'll be more than happy to field any questions and walk you through anything you'd like to know. If you don't already know, Adorama is an online retailer with a heavy focus in camera gear and electronics. A lot of people don't know this but they frequently have a lot of gaming stuff that other retailers quickly sell out of. Their flagship storefront is right here in New York City, which is how I came to hear of them. They also do rentals if you wanna try some of the expensive stuff, but don't wanna drop a whole Hollywood budget on it. Check them out at the link in the description below, which will take you to their gaming site, but you can use that to navigate to wherever you want on their site. Also, don't forget to check out the Adorama XP Twitch channel tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, where we can hang out and we can talk about this stuff. And cut. I'm the only one here. We've seen a lot of emulation devices like this that run on a similar operating system. This one looks like Emulek with an emulation station skin thrown on top, but it's actually a custom Linux build designed specifically for the fun key S, even though it's probably just based off of something else. This little thing plays Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, Game Gear, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, Atari Lynx, Neo Geo Pocket, Wonder Swan Color, and surprisingly, PlayStation 1 games. And honestly, it runs all of these surprisingly well, even PlayStation 1. It even comes with a whole bunch of games on it already. They're just all freeware stuff you've probably never heard of. Getting your own games on here is a breeze too. This might be the most perfectly optimized emulation console that I have ever used. It's just also incredibly uncomfortable to use. And I know it's like the whole gimmick is to be tiny, but I wish it was like 
not so gimmicky, you know? It's ridiculously small. I mean, I've got big ass hands, but this is still ridiculous. It's even thin. When it's open, it's almost as thin as my iPhone with the case on. It has a D-pad that resembles a PlayStation style D-pad, which is fine for something this tiny. It has the A, B, X, Y buttons you'd expect. Start, select, L and R buttons on the back and a dedicated menu button that actually functions the same across all emulators. What a, what a novel concept. Despite having two speaker grills, it only really has one speaker and it sounds all right for such a small speaker. It charges via micro USB, which isn't the best, but it probably had to be that way in order to keep the form factor so small. This is also how you get the games on here. It has a micro SD card built in, a surprisingly big 32 gigabyte micro SD card, but about 30 gigabytes of usable space, which is plenty. That micro SD card is accessible by just unscrewing these two screws and popping the case off and getting under the battery. This is also how you replace the buttons if you want different colors, but why would you disrupt the atomic purple theme? Anyway, FunKey has a much easier way to get your games onto this built-in micro SD card. You can just plug it into a computer and it'll show up as a hard drive. Wow, wow, wow. amazing. If this is your first time watching one of my emulation device videos, you might be thinking to yourself, that's like an obvious thing. They all do that, right? Right? Honestly, and sadly, this is like the best feature for me. ROMs that you put on here show up with no box art. I'm sure it's easy to put the box art on here with certain box art scraper programs, but I'm not bothering with that. The only hiccup I could see some of you having with putting your own ROMs on here is that the Game Boy Advance and PlayStation 1 emulators don't come with their own BIOS files for legal reasons. It's very simple to get your own BIOS files. All you need to do is type this into Google with download after it and then go to whatever website comes up and dodge all of the dodgy looking download links until you finally get one that works. It's kind of like your own little like mini game. But once you have those files, you can just plop them into the corresponding folders and it'll just work. It's very simple. I was blown away by how well the PlayStation emulation works on here. My Metal Gear Solid ROM is hit or miss with my larger, more powerful portable emulators, but it ran flawlessly on the FunKey S. It even booted up very quickly. It's just impossible to see anything on the 1.54 inch 240 by 240 P screen. The aspect ratio of this screen is a bit weird. Retro games are like kind of square, but not really. A CRT TV is four by three. So most games look best at a four by three aspect ratio. This is not four by three. So all of the emulators on here default to stretched, which should really be called squished because while it does stretch the image vertically, it looks more like the image is squished horizontally, which is a problem when you're playing a lot of side scrollers because things come at you way faster than they normally would. This is another major downfall of this product that I didn't realize until playing around with it for a while. Since the screen is so tiny and the aspect ratio is weirdly square, some games don't really fit right. There's really no good settings for Sega Genesis, Game Boy Advance, or PlayStation games, since those are the most 4x3. Zoomed is like a happy medium, but it still crops out the sides. Scaled is probably technically the best, but it makes everything so insanely small on this already tiny screen. And for whatever reason, Scaled is just broken on the PSX emulator. They really should have just had the screen take up more of the top horizontally. There's room there for, for that. I'm sure that it was cheaper for them to go with a one by one screen. One by one screens this tiny were probably more readily available for them. They might have had to make a custom four by three for this device. But for $80, that probably wasn't the place they should have cut corners. 
Not every emulator has all these scaling options. Game Boy only has stretched or scaled, and scaled here isn't too bad. Super Nintendo only has stretched and cropped, and cropped barely adds any letterboxing, and barely crops any of the sides. It looks like most emulators here are going with a pixel perfect type scaling, so if that's a problem for you, you might want to consider that. The weird aspect ratio is mostly just a problem with Sega Genesis and Game Boy Advance games. I'm not well versed enough in PlayStation 1 games to be able to say stretching ruins a game for me, so just keep all of this in mind. Even though this could be a terrible downside to this device, it's also a wonderful positive. Normally, I don't like operating systems like this that have every emulator thrown into one clean UI because it usually doesn't do every emulator all right. There's normally ones that are more well optimized than others and changing the settings per emulator is normally a pain in the ass because of how seamless everything's supposed to be. The settings just don't work right across all of the consoles. The Fun Key S has every emulator optimized beautifully. All of the games run perfectly well as is, aside from the terrible aspect ratio. I actually think I prefer it this way, aside from the aspect ratio. If everything runs so well already, the only thing that I would really want to change here is the aspect ratio, which is easy enough to do on here per emulator. And that's kind of more of a hardware issue than it is a software issue. There are other menu settings that you can access on the fly with this one button that is the same button across all of the emulators across the entire OS, which again, you'd think is something that's just a given. You think every emulator should just be like that, but they're not. From here, you can change the volume, brightness, you can save your game state up to nine slots, load a game state, change the aspect ratio or exit the game. Other emulation consoles have weird button combinations for changing volume or brightness, or sometimes even accessing the settings at all. So it's very refreshing to see everything packed together so neatly here. From a software user experience perspective, this is the best portable emulator that I have ever used. From a hardware and comfortability perspective, this thing is, is pretty terrible. And like, I get it, it's it's part of the novelty. I don't think anybody's getting this thing to be their daily driver, their go-to portable emulator. But for 65 euros or $80, that's a lot for novelty. This all makes me wish that Funky would make the same device just, just a little bit bigger and with a four by three screen. One of the first portable emulators that I ever reviewed on this channel, the original Pocket Go, is still one of my favorite portable emulators. It has all of the same buttons that the Fun Key has, it has a worse user experience, but I love the Game Boy Micro style form factor. It's just small enough to be practical to actually use. It fits in my pocket without taking up much space at all. And it's only $30. Not to mention the screen is the right aspect ratio. If Fun Key made something like this, it might be my favorite portable emulator ever. Which is the problem with all of these emulation devices. There's so many, and they're all so close to being perfect, but none of them get it all right. The Fun Key S is the closest I've seen, but its form factor, its novelty, its smallness, its biggest selling point, while still really cool, ends up being its biggest inhibitor. Is there a reason why like your your chin is like on your chest? Uh, I'm self-conscious, you dick. <laughs> so what do you guys think about the Fun Key S? Is this something that you're interested in? Does it solve a problem for you? Maybe you need a little, a little Chisai game console for yourself. It's definitely an interesting thing. It's definitely gonna be a conversation starter if you whip this thing out on a, on a train or, or uh, hanging out with your friends. It is a fun little device. It's just not gonna be my go-to for playing any games on. <laughs> Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Right now, I believe it's only available on their website and it's, uh, it's pretty backed up because mine came pretty late. I'm not gonna link it. You could just Google Fun Key S, but I'll link the other emulators that I talk about in the description below.
because those links help support this channel. And there's wood. So, fuck them. Of course, we got new videos here all the time, at least once a week. Next week, I might be taking a week off, so maybe not next week. Make sure you're subscribed so you see when we have all the new videos and make sure you have the bell on if you actually want to see every single new video because the bell only helps if you actually click on those notifications and watch the video all the way through. So thank you for making it this far into the video. I love you. Don't forget tonight I'll be streaming on twitch.tv slash wolfden and then I'm gonna be going over to the Adorama Twitch account at this time because I forgot, but I'll have it at the edit. I'm sure we'll be hanging out and talking about camera gear and all this stuff. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support us is just subscribe and watch the videos. Thank you very much. And share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe likes these portable emulators. Maybe they just like retro gaming in general, and maybe they might be interesting in something so tiny like this. Tag a small friend. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week. It's just incredibly uncomfortable to use. It's just a, it was a swarm of mosquitoes or a motorcycle.